Hi guys, I'm Olivia. I'm the face behind River Birch Threads. Today's tutorial will be focusing on using embroidery to jazz up the pocket on a pair of denim jeans or they can be pants. You can use a shirt. Anything that has a pocket will work. The pattern we'll be using is available on my Etsy shop um, for download with the PDF. Um, it's linked in the description of this video. Um, this project is aimed at beginner to intermediate level stitchers. Um, embroidering on denim can be a little bit trickier, but hopefully by the end of this video, you guys will all be pros. All right, so let's get started. For this project, I'm using Sulky Stabilizer. So it looks like this, they're eight by 10 sheets um, and they're printable. So you can actually stick this right into your printer, which is what I've done to get my pattern. The reason I've chosen to use stabilizer is that it allows me to pre-print the pattern, stick it directly onto the fabric, and then I have a guide while I stitch. So now I'm ready to put it onto my fabric. Um, you'll just want to make sure it's free of any um, hairs or dust before you stick it on. So you peel off the mesh sticker like that. And I'm going to place it, sort of tuck it just underneath the pocket part like that and just push it down, making sure all the corners go down. As you stitch, the sticker does kind of pop off a bit, but it's okay, you can usually just push it back down. So I'm happy with that placement. And then I'll take my stickers that are going to go on the pocket and repeat the same thing. Peel it off. and just position it where I want it to go. Right there. And right here. And once you have something like this, you are ready to get the stitching with the sunflowers and for that I'm going to use DMC 732 for the stems. So pull down from the bottom of the skein about an arm's length of thread. Embroidery floss or thread is comprised of six individual strands. Um, for this you're going to separate two and you're going to just slowly pull it down. Once you have your two strands separated, thread your needle and pull it through. Now for this project, we're gonna pull it all the way through so that the ends match up and tie a double knot. So it should look something like that. For most of this project, I'm actually gonna be stitching upside down. The reason being that in order to access the stitching area, I have to go into the top of the pants. Make sure the pants are undone, um, and this way you'll have the most room to work with. I'm making sure there's nothing in my way here, like pocket liners or tags. I'm going to take my threaded needle, and I'm going to go underneath the fabric, and I'm going to find the bottom of that stem for the sunflowers. And I'm going to pull my 
floss all the way through like that. And I'm going to start by doing a stitch called back stitch. So I'm going to do a stitch length, which is for me about a centimeter, and I'm going to pull that through like that. And then I'm going to jump a stitch length ahead, pulling up all the way through, and I'm going to come back down to the tail end of my previous stitch, and I'm going to pull that down. One more time. I'm hopping a stitch length up, pulling it through, and going back down through the tail of my previous stitch. And I'm going to keep repeating this process until I've done all the sunflower stems. I've almost finished stitching my stems, but I ran out of floss. And so what that looks like on the other side I have about this much left and this is where I want to cut it because I want to have enough room to tie a secure knot on the back. So I'll show you how I do that. I take my scissors, snip, separate the floss into those twos again, and then I'm tying a double knot and I'll trim it. You should do this every single time you run out of floss as you go. This will keep the back side nice and tidy. And I'll just trim that original knot. There we go. So it should look something like that. So now what I'm going to do is, again, I have my original strand and now there's four left. So I'm gonna again, split it into twos and separate the floss and thread the needle. Now I can jump back in from underneath and I really just had one more stitch to do. Pull it through and go down through the bottom side there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, using the same color, so I'm already set up, is I'm going to fill in those leaves. Um, so for the leaves, I'm going to be using a stitch called fishbone stitch. So to start, I'm going to come up through the top of one of my leaves, like so. Pull your floss all the way through. And I'm going to come down another stitch length, so approximately a third or halfway down the leaf, like that. Next, I'm going to come up on one of the sides. It doesn't matter which one. Pull it through, and I'm going to do a slightly longer stitch. You can just slightly cross over that original stitch. And now I'm going to switch to the other side and do the same thing and go back and forth. And eventually you'll start to see a leaf formation taking shape. Keeping in mind, we're following the pattern, but also that this will wash off afterwards. So you don't need to worry if there are lines showing. If you're not using a stabilizer, if you've decided to go the route where you've drawn on the pattern, then you would have to cover up all your lines because if you didn't use a washable pen, then the lines would show up and they won't necessarily go away from washing. So I'm almost done. There we go. So that's our fishbone leaf, and I'm going to repeat the same process for the other two leaves on the sunflower. If you reach this point where you have the stem and leaves filled in, wherever you are with your floss, cut it and tie a knot. Now what we're gonna do is the two leaves on the actual pocket part. So if you need to re-thread your needle, do so, or just retie that knot. Pocket is a little harder to work with because you, depending on how large your pocket is, um, you don't have very much room. So as best you can, you're gonna get your needle to the top of one of these leaves 
and push it through. And then you're going to continue doing your fishbone stitch. Now you may have noticed that when you're stitching on a seam, it's a lot harder to push the needle through. Um, this is absolutely true and all you can really do is just use more finger strength. If you're finding it's hurting you, a thimble might be uh, the right answer for you. Personally, I just, I guess, have developed a callus. <laughs> but you should give yourself breaks because it's definitely a lot harder to stitch on clothing than it is just stitching using um, just fabric stretched in a hoop. So I'm just repeating that same technique for fishbone stitch. This time it's not upside down, so that's nice. And I'm gonna do that for both of these leaves. If you have something like this, you're gonna trim off your floss and because you're so close to the edge here, just be really careful that you uh, trim it well so that you don't have floss popping up through the, po like up the pocket. That was probably pretty difficult. Um, I still struggle with it um, just because it's just kind of awkward to stitch like that. Um, so don't be discouraged if you poked yourself or you found that difficult. It definitely is. Um, even though the stitches we're doing aren't super advanced, I would say this project is more advanced just because it's really awkward to um, to stitch inside a pocket. For the sunflower petals, I'm going to be using DMC 3820 and again pulling an arm's length of floss. I'm going to split it into threes this time and thread my needle. So I've split my floss into three, I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to thread my needle. So again, I'm always starting from underneath. I'm going to start at any point on any flower petal, pulling through the fabric, and I'm going to do a stitch down like that. This is just a straight stitch that I'm doing, and I'm going to continue doing that. Super easy. You can always fill in more petals than I've shown with the uh, actual pattern markings, if you'd like, just to make the flowers look more full. It's totally up to you. So I'm just gonna continue doing that on each flower. So you should end up with something like this. Um, this next part, we're going to be using DMC 840. I've split the floss in twos and I've doubled the floss over and tied my knot. Um, we are going to be filling in the center of the sunflowers using French knots. So this is probably the trickiest part of the project. So once you're finished with this part, the good news is the hardest part is over. So we're always starting underneath the fabric. You're going to come up. It doesn't matter which flower you start with, just somewhere around the outside of the flower, the circle. So you're coming up and then using your non-dominant stitching hand, hold your floss about this distance. You're gonna wrap once, twice, holding that tension. You're going to find a spot right next to where you came up, but not the exact hole. Push down and then basically you're going to find the needle underneath and pull down all the while you're keeping the tension with the other hand and giving yourself a nice little knot there. So I'll show you again. Coming up through the fabric and holding it about this distance, wrapping once, twice, keeping that tension, pushing through, and then I'm finding it on the bottom side and pulling it through. The stitch is really tricky because you kind of have to use two hands um, and you kind of have to maneuver your garment a bit. So once, twice, push through. For me, um, I find that the trick is all about tension to get good French knots. Um, there's another video on my YouTube channel you can watch that goes into more detail about how to do French knots if you're struggling with this. 
So I'm going to continue doing French knots until I filled in all three sunflowers. Okay, great job. If you've made it this far, that means you're through the hardest part. Um, so next we're going to be doing the daisies. Um, I'm starting with DMC 3362 and I'm using two strands of floss. So again, I'm always going to be starting underneath the fabric. I'm going to find the bottom of one of these daisy stems and come all the way through, being careful not to snag the pocket. And I'm using that same back stitch to do these stems. So just to recap, I'm doing a stitch length up like that, pulling it through and hopping forward a stitch length coming all the way up and coming back down through the tail end of my previous stitch. And I'll continue doing that until I've completed the stems. So once the stems are in, we're gonna do the little leaves and we're just gonna be using a um, satin stitch, which is just a filler stitch. So I'll come up through the top of one of the leaves, pull all the way through I'm going down to the bottom of the leaf, pulling down, and then I'm just gonna switch sides and do just a straight line of stitch until these leaves are nicely filled in. It's probably only gonna be three or four stitches. And then I'm gonna hop to the other side. and it'll look something like that. So I'm gonna continue doing that for this leaf and then I'm gonna go over and do um, this side. So now you should have something like this. Um, I'm going to use the same color to do these two outside vines on the pocket. Now, if you're like me and you still have some floss left over, um, you do have to cut it. You can't just come up through the fabric because otherwise you'll close off your pocket and it won't be functional. So make sure you're snipping the fabric before you're starting, or sorry, the floss before you start on the pocket. So I've re-threaded my needle, two strands of floss doubled over. And again, I'm gonna pull up this pocket and I'm starting at the end of my little stem here, pulling all the way through. And I'm using, again, back stitch to do the stems and I'll be using satin stitch to fill in the leaves. So when you're finished you should have something like this. Now uh, at this point you may be feeling kind of frustrated. I'm sure that was pretty difficult. Um, when you're working in a pocket you have such restricted stitching room. Um, if you stabbed yourself with your needle you're not alone. Um, one thing that may be happening to you it may be um, feeling like your needle is getting kind of sticky. Um, that's because you're passing through a sticker essentially every stitch you make. So if that does happen, just wash off your needle. Um, it will continue to happen as you stitch. Um, that's just kind of the price you pay for working with a stabilizer. So next up are the daisy petals. We're going to be using DMC Blanc, so just a white. Um, I've split the floss into threes and doubled it over. Starting underneath the fabric at whichever daisy petal you want. You're going to come up, pull it through, and again, we're just using those straight stitches. Over to the next one, pulling up, and coming through. And I'm just going to continue doing that until I've filled in all of my daisies. So you should now have something like this. Um, I know I said that we did the hardest part of the project when we did these uh, sunflower centers, but I also forgot that we have to do French knots for the daisies. Um, so we're using DMC 781. Um, I've split it into two strands of floss, threaded my needle. So I'm gonna go start from underneath, like always, find that spot, pulling it through, and just a recap, non-dominant hand, wrapping once, twice, and then pushing the needle through and pulling it down. And I'm 
probably going to do about three French knots for each daisy. So again, finding my spot, coming up, wrapping once, twice, pushing down. Sorry if this is hard for you to see. Keep trying to keep that tension and pulling it through. Okay, moving right along. Um, next, we're going to be using DMC 500, which is like a very dark green. I'm um, using two strands of floss doubled over. And for this, I'm going to do my little bud stems. So this one, this one, and this one. So again, I'm going to start from the underside at the end of the stem. Pull all the way through. And I'm going to go up my stem using backstitch. Super easy. You guys know how to do that now. Once I get to this point, I'm going to just do two stitches at the top here, sort of encasing that little bud. Kind of in a V shape like that and then I'm going to go down the stem doing one sort of side stitch on every bud like that and here 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 and I'm going to repeat that for the other two stems as well okay so you should have something like this um, you'll notice I just filled in this little guy that was attached using backstitch and our satin stitch for the leaves um, if you struggled doing this fine because it was hard to get up in this pocket um, you are not alone um, obviously you're in a very confined space again um, if you absolutely couldn't get all the way up there don't sweat it remember this washes off and you can always like make your design curve over this way or something like that there are always ways around around it okay so next I'm going to be adding the little flowers um, I'm going to be using DMC 3064 and I'm going to use that for these two stems um, for this part especially if you feel like switching up the colors and making it your own absolutely do that um, these are just colors that I'm using but these can absolutely be substituted. So I'm starting with three strands of floss doubled over. I'm coming underneath the fabric and I'm just going to do straight stitches following the shape, which is three stitches. So one and then doing a V shape like that. Two, and then my third one is just kind of going through the middle of those two stitches. So I'm just going to repeat that pattern going all the way up this stem. Okay, so now you should have something like this. Um, I'm going to use DMC 972 or 927 to do the little buds on this last one here. So I'm using the same technique, just using straight stitch. So next I'll do the lavender. Um, I'm using DMC 209. I split the floss into threes. I'm going to start obviously underneath the fabric at the bottom of one of the lavenders like this. And I'm just doing straight stitch. Pull it all the way through in V shapes. And I'm going to go about halfway up each stalk of lavender using that V shape like this.
So once you've gone about halfway up, you're going to switch to DMC 210, which is just a ever so slightly lighter shade of purple. And this will give you a nice subtle little gradient. And you're just going to continue up till the top of the lavender. Okay, great work guys. We are in the home stretch now. Um, so everything that's left over, so basically all these stems and leaves, we're just going to use the MC uh, 3053 splitting it into two strands of floss doubled over and I'm just going to use that same technique I've been using all throughout the project where I'm using um, back stitch and satin stitch for the leaves. Okay. Okay, so great job guys. Yours should look something like this. You can turn it around and everything's filled in. So um, the next step would be washing off the stabilizer. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, if you're wondering what to do with all the little tiny scraps of floss, um, I like to keep a little jar of all my scraps. It's kind of just a fun way to, um, just a nice little decoration and also just keeps the scraps out of the garbage so you're not wasting anything. Um, I'll show you what mine looks like on the inside. So it should kind of look like that. Um, I don't have really very many um, long pieces. I'm going to go in and further trim it, um, but this won't bother you while you're wearing it. It's nice and soft. Um, a lot of people ask me if I put anything on the back. Um, the answer is no. Just make sure you do obviously a double knot every time you are um, trimming your floss um, and that will keep your stitches in place. Um, so I'm going to go over how to wash off the stabilizer and then we'll talk about washing the garment. The sink with uh, lukewarm water and a little bit of soap and I'm just going to submerge the jeans into the water and then I'm just going to start rubbing around the stabilizer and you'll see it starts to dissolve. Um, I would give this at least a few minutes and then you probably will have to wash it a second time because it can dry um, a little bit hard and stiff so you don't want that. You want the floss to be softer so you'll probably want to wash this at least twice um and you can even let it soak for a little while if that helps um, the stabilizer should wash off fairly fast but there is still sort of glue residue so you do want to give it a good rub <laughs> 